All right, guys, so first autocross here in the mini. What's up, everybody? Super Dark Swain here for Mini Weekly Update number 16 on this Friday. So, uh, what's new with the Mini? Well, not much. Uh, I'm gonna s Next week, I'm going to probably be passing 10,000 miles that I've already put on the Mini. And I'll do a little roundup of what I think about the Mini after 10,000 miles already. And um, so, yeah, I've been doing a lot of driving and uh, have a more developed sense of, you know, what this car is like over that time. And uh, so, yeah, make sure to watch for that next week. But for this week, uh, a lot of things to hit on quickly. Uh, first, just thank you again for the amount of donations. Over this past week, you guys keep pouring in money. Another person donated a hundred dollars too, which is awesome. And I mean, so a lot of you are super generous, and I just really appreciate it once again. And uh, as a thank you for that, and for you know the amount of subscribers that the subscribers keep growing faster and faster. I'm sure a lot of that is because you guys are sharing the videos and stuff, and I really appreciate that. Just spreading the word. And so uh, it looks like uh, around Tuesday or so, we should hopefully have around eighty thousand subscribers, which is awesome. Awesome, and so I want to do a live stream Tuesday night. I'm thinking maybe around six o'clock Eastern time uh, this Tuesday, it's September 9th, and uh, there's going to be some cars that are going to be just released uh, on the 9th, and the new iPhone will be coming out on the 9th. A lot of stuff going on on the 9th, so I'll do it in the evening. That way, it'll be out of the way of all those events, and I'll be able to talk to you about those new cars that were released. I think the Jag XE is one of them, and I think there's one other one as well. So uh, yeah, that's uh, going to be. Be sweet so yeah it's the ninth it'll be I'll try and do it on YouTube I know I've had some issues I'm hoping they get those issues worked out because I'm not too familiar with some of the other streaming services but I'd rather just do it on YouTube because you guys can all find it easily that way and it's uh, nice and simple so hopefully the quality issues aren't bad this time and uh, so yeah 6 p.m. Eastern time on the 9th hope to see as many of you there as possible Another cool thing I want to mention briefly, uh, if you've been following me on Instagram or the Seaworks Fan Facebook page uh, for like the beginning of this year, uh, you'll see that I had a picture with Shane Dawson. I had a chance to be an extra in his new upcoming movie called Not Cool, and um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very... Uh, interesting movie the you know, the humor is extremely extremely dirty but anyway so on top of just him making a movie they did a reality TV show about documenting how he's going about making the movie and he's competing with another director anyway um, they did a lot of behind the scenes kind of shots for this reality TV show and the crew was following all of us around so if you watch uh, this show the show is called the chair it's gonna be on stars and it premieres uh, on Saturday night here I'll give the exact time and the links to all that for you to check out but uh, if you watch that you should be able to spot me uh, I was in some party scenes I was in some school scenes stuff like that but uh, I worked as an extra for that movie for I think seven or eight days straight so um, I'm gonna be in, I think, a lot of scenes, and so it'll be cool. So you can watch that reality show, and you might spot me a few times. Uh, the last thing I want to mention real quickly is um, I've noticed that the mini weekly updates don't get nearly as many views as the BRZ weekly updates did. Um, sometimes almost half the views. I know that a lot of that's probably because a lot of you are a lot more interested in the BRZ, and whenever I got rid of the BRZ, a lot of you guys just stopped watching, and you're probably not even watching this update. But um, I want to try, and if there's some other things aside from just the fact that I have a mini now if there's other things that uh, you know I can do to make these more interesting please give me some suggestions or uh, tips or ways that I can change the updates I've considered like separating them and going back to the way it was when I first got the BRZ where I just you know do updates only whenever there's something important so like you know if there's something that happens with the mini I'll post a separate video about that otherwise I just won't say anything about the mini and I'll just do weekly news and that's it and update you on the mini you know maybe once every month or two months or something like that but uh, so let me know what you guys think about that kind of stuff I just you know want to try and trim out the fat so if there's things you guys aren't interested in watching or things you'd like to see more of let me know 
another thing is, you know, I I am considering uh, maybe possibly getting a new car in the spring. Um, I want to probably at least keep the Mini through the winter time, just because any newer car I would get would get messed up in the winter anyway, because, you know, we have all this salt and stuff around here. So I'd keep this probably at least through the winter, but in the spring I'd like to get something. I'm kicking around some ideas on how to make that possible. Uh, my financial situation has improved a little bit. Hopefully it'll be a lot better by the time next spring comes around. I might be in a better position at that point to uh, get something else, but um, I know a lot of you ask, you know, why don't you buy these cars that you review? You know, the S2000, which I appreciate all your support on that review, by the way, or the 350Z, 370Z, all these different cars. Uh, 370Z, I just flat out can't afford right now. Uh, 350Z, I can't afford unless, you know, it's a really worn out one, and I would rather get one that's lower mileage, nicer, and those tend to be a little bit more money a little bit out of my price range. The whole point in buying the Mini was I wanted to, you know, reduce my car payment a lot. And so I cut my car payment in half from what it was with the BRZ. Um, and, you know, the Mini was a lot cheaper because I bought it used and these don't hold their value as much as uh, other cars. So, um, you know, I need to have a lower car payment and, you know, stuff like the S2000, I could get a nice, fairly nice one for, you know, the amount of money that I have to play around with. But, um, you know, the S2000, it's, I like a car as a daily driver, I want something that's safe, and the S2000 is built well, but it just doesn't have the airbags that, you know, make me feel secure and comfortable to, you know, drive on a daily basis. Uh, this car has the side curtain airbags, the, si the side seat mounted airbags, and all that stuff, and I mean, yes, it's a smaller car, but it's still got a lot of safety equipment, which makes me feel really good. The S2000 doesn't have any of that, plus the small cars, there's not even like, you could say, you know, you have a lot of size to protect you. Um, so. Um, that's the main reason why I don't think I could daily drive an S2000 as much as I adore them. It would be an amazing weekend car, but I couldn't have it as my sole single only car to have. Um, I also enjoy having a back seat just to, you know, transport people in a pinch from time to time. Even if it's a small one, like in the BRZ, I could at least still do something. Whereas an S2000, if someone needs a ride, I'll say, sorry, here's some money for a taxi. So, um... That's, you know, those are my main reasons why I don't get the uh, S2000 or 350Z or cars like that. But anyway, so uh, that's all the updates and um, yeah, there'll be more to come here. But uh, let me know what you think about all the stuff I mentioned. You know, I'm always interested in hearing you guys' thoughts on how to make the channel better. So uh, definitely uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, I'll send it back to me at the news desk for this week's news. Right, so for this week's news, the first thing is, of course, the 2016 Mazda MX-5 Miata debuted, and they had, like, a live stream event. It was like a new iPhone coming out or something. Everyone was obsessed with this, and uh, so, obviously, this is a smaller, more aggressive-looking Miata, and I think it's really cool. The back end reminds me a little bit too much of the BMW Z4, but um, I, I think it's overall, it's a really nice looking car and I like it a lot. And uh, the really impressive thing is they said they dropped it by 220 pounds, which is, I mean, the car was already super light. So to make it that much lighter is really impressive. I mean, look, Ford set out to, you know, make the new Mustang lighter and instead it gained a few pounds. So, I mean, it's really hard to actually cut weight in a car. And so to, you know, be able to do that is really impressive. So let me know, first off, what you think about the new Miata. I'm really curious to hear all of your thoughts. And while we're talking about the Mazdas, uh, Mazda, there's been all kinds of, you know, reports and rumors that have been spawned because of this, you know, saying that there's going to be a Miata Coupe that's finally going to come out, which a lot of people have been begging for. I mean, there's the retractable hardtop version right now for the, you know, previous Gen MX-5, but, you know, everyone wants a proper Cayman fighter kind of looking thing. And so we'll see if they come out with that. No one's really sure. Uh, they said the Mazda 6 is going to be getting some updates here pretty soon. And on top of that, they're saying that a Mazda Speed 3 is on track for a 2016 release, and uh, even a higher performance Mazda 2 um, might be coming as well. You know, fight the Fiesta ST and stuff like that, they might do a Mazda Speed 2 as well. So we'll see. All kinds of interesting stuff going on at Mazda here, but I mean, very exciting just to see the uh, normal 2016 MX-5 Miata is finally out. It's, I can't wait to hear more specs. That's the next thing is, you know, hearing what kind of horsepower numbers. No one knows that stuff yet. So hopefully we'll get some actual performance figures here soon. Right, so one of the cars that's going to be debuting on September 9th, that, uh, one of the reasons why when I do the live stream, this car will be going live, and that's the new Mercedes AMG GT. Um, that's going to be debuting the final look of the car on September 9th. 
And so if you join the live stream on Tuesday night, you'll be able to, uh, we can talk about it and see what you guys think about it. I'll give you my thoughts on it. But uh, yeah, exciting. They're finally going to be releasing that. Uh, and this is something I posted up. If you follow the Super Fan Facebook page, um, I talked about this, I shared a link, uh, that there was a mule spotted of a Subaru uh, Impreza hatchback, but it has a Deborah X front end on it, um, and uh, it has a hood scoop that's covered up, and it's this mule, a lot of people are saying it's a Deborah X hatchback, but other people are saying, well, if it was a Deborah X, it wouldn't have had the hood scoop covered, because you need to feed the intercooler, so they're saying it could be a test bed for a new Impreza, this could just be the 2017 Impreza that's going to look more like the Deborah X. No one's really sure, but one thing that I can tell you is if they do end up doing a 2016-2017 WRX hatchback, it's going to be based on the Impreza. As much as Subaru wants to tell you that the WRX is separate from the Impreza now, it's still based on an Impreza. That's why the WRX sedan the same, it has the same profile and the same basic structure as a normal Impreza. So if you want a hatchback version of this new WRX, you're going to have to deal with the hatchback version of the current Impreza, which, I mean, people have mixed feelings on. So, I mean, you're going to have just have some wider fenders on it, and that's what you're going to get if you want a WRX hatchback. Uh, people seem to think they're still going to get some kind of crazy-looking car, but it has to be based on the Impreza, and you can only do so much with the Impreza to make it look better. So, um, that's just the way it is with the WRX. They've always kind of been stuck with that and that's just the way it goes so um, I feel bad for whoever's designing the cars at Subaru though because it seems like any time I mean everyone was mad there wasn't a hatchback now it looks like there might be a hatchback and everyone's mad it doesn't look cool enough so I would I'm really glad I don't actually work for Subaru because I feel like you can never make Subaru fans happy but uh, that's uh, I'll move on I'm not gonna keep ranting on next is some exciting news from BMW and that is uh, first off uh, there's a BMW M2 that's been spotted uh, lapping the Nurburgring I believe and doing some cool stuff you can tell it's an actual M and not just the 135 or the 235i M's and all that kind of stuff is because this one has some proper brakes proper wheels and it's a, you can tell the way the front air dam is uh, sculpted and stuff. This is a proper M car. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of people really like the, you know, the 235i, but, um, you know, people would just want a little bit more performance, I think, and, uh, or at least a limited slip differential for Pete's sake, and so hopefully the M2 will deliver on both of those things. Uh, other exciting news from BMW is uh, the BMW 1 Series sedan was out, out caught testing, and this is going to be fighting the CLA and the A3, and you can tell that it's kind of that same uh, coupe sedan silhouette kind of thing because of the way uh, the rear roof line is, you know, sculpted such that, you know, rear passengers won't have any kind of headroom, but it looks cool, and that's what sells right now. So, uh, interesting to see that, and uh, I don't know if we're going to get it in the U.S. or when it's coming out. Uh, it's just kind of being teased right now. Next is Land Rover debuted the Discovery Sport this week, and that's a 2015 model, um, and it's, uh, it's their entry-level model. It looks a lot like the Evoque, and this one actually has room for seven passengers as well, so it's larger than the Evoque. Um, and yeah, $38,000 is what this thing is going to be starting at, which is really impressive. Um, so, uh, you know, it's roomier than an Evoque, and it's cheaper. I don't know how they're expecting to sell Evokes now, but... Uh, Interesting to uh, see that. Now, uh, some next is the, just some mild updates. First is that, you know, with the Dodge Viper sales not being the best, um, Dodge is trying to give uh, the 2015 Viper a little bit more excitement with giving it five more horsepower. And there's a new GT model now, which has some of the niceties of the GTS, but without the GTS price tag, so it's uh, a little bit of a cheaper model. And so that's cool that they've uh, done that. Also, um, in the same group of uh, Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, the SRT version, got a 5 horsepower increase as well, as, along with mild tweaks uh, for 2015 here, just to, uh, you know, keep it competitive and stuff. I know everyone wants a Hellcat Jeep. I don't know if we're going to see that or not. They're crazy enough that they could do it. I don't know if they will, though. Um, we'll see. It'll be interesting. But uh, the other car that got a mild update here for the upcoming model year is the Audi A6, which uh, got some mild uh, you know, styling improvements. It still looks pretty much the same, uh, just a little bit more aggressive. There's some slight powertrain tweaks, nothing huge and uh, barely worth mentioning. Uh, next is an exciting report saying all of you that love the G-Wagon, the Mercedes G-Class, um, the Mercedes G65 AMG is going to be coming to the U.S. Uh, in 2016 here, um, which uh, makes it pretty awesome. I mean, they already have the G63, 
But, you know, people, that's not good enough. You're going to have the Top Dog 65 motor in there, which is bonkers. And that's that 6-liter twin-turbo V12 that's going to be in this, uh, you know, the G-Wagon. It's already in the G-Wagon, but now it's going to be coming to the U.S. And that should make uh, a lot of people excited. But they're saying that the price is going to be two hundred and fifty grand. I mean, the G-Wagons are sweet, but $250,000, you can buy a really nice Bentley for two hundred and fifty grand. I don't know. G-Wagons are nice, but not that nice in my opinion. But for those of you that want it, there you go. Next is an exciting report here saying that the 2016 Ford Focus RS that's been spotted out testing, they're saying that it actually might be all-wheel drive, and they said that U.S. sales are likely now. So, I mean, obviously with how well the Ford Focus ST and Fiesta ST have been doing, Ford realizes, hey, people want hot hatches, and, you know, with the Ford Focus here, they're saying that for the RS version, it's going to use the same uh, turbocharged four-cylinder that's going to be in the 2015 Ford Mustang. In that car, it makes 310 horsepower and 320 foot-pounds of torque, but they're saying that for the RS version of the Focus, it should do 325 to 350, which, if that's true, means that there's a lot of room in that Mustang EcoBoost for a lot more power. So, uh... Yeah, that's pretty sweet, but, um, and obviously if you put 325 to 350 horsepower through the front wheels, it's not going to end well, so they'd be smart to make it all-wheel drive, and, uh, sounds like that may be what they're doing, so hopefully they will. For all of you that really want a sweet, you know, WRX STI hatchback, but you can't get it right now, well, maybe you'll be able to get a Focus RS at least, it's all-wheel drive and hatchback, so there you go. And, um... Another uh, last little bit of interesting news here, uh, two things. First is that the Aston Martin Lagonda leaked recently whenever um, this the airline that was flying it over uh, took some pictures with it, uh, which uh, probably wasn't the best idea, but now we get to see it, so that's cool. And, I mean, it looks good. I don't know, to me, it's not as beautiful as other previous Aston Martins, certainly not as beautiful as the Vanquish or any of the Aston Martins, to be perfectly honest. I don't think it... It looks good... I don't think it looks as good as it should, though. Being an Aston Martin, it should really amaze me, and that doesn't. Um, but interesting to see that uh, you know those are starting to pop up here. And the last thing is that there's a report here saying that the Lamborghini uh, Urus is going to be priced similar to a Huracan, which uh, is pretty impressive it's, if it's going to have a similar powertrain to the Huracan, but it's going to be more car and bigger and um, more luxurious, probably. To have it at the same price as the Huracan would be pretty interesting. I was expecting it to be even more. But they're saying that um, it could be around 250 grand. So again, there is some competition for your G65, uh, you know, wagon. I mean, I don't know. I think I'd rather have a Lamborghini SUV over a Mercedes, but maybe that's just me. But anyway, that's it for all the news this week, guys. So send it back to me in the car. All right. So I'll leave you guys a nice little acceleration here. Okay, I always do. the turbo. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.